we've sold thousands of lots to people willing to exchange on the day and complete within 28 days. Property auctions made quick, easy and simple. Clive Emson, Land and Property Auctioneers. Well, hello. Yes, we are back once again for the September live catalogue launch show with Clive Emson Auctioneers. As you can see, I'm joined by the expert, the man who knows it all, the face of auctions. It is uh, Paul Bridgman. Paul, how are you doing? Are you excited for this one? Yeah, I am. Yes, yeah. Really big, uh, really big catalogue for September. Uh, great news. Um, off the back of the results from the last auction. Well, I've got an empty seat here, mate. What's going on? Well, I'll tell you what, we're, as you can see, we're not together this time. There's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, mainly, the turbo has gone on my Peugeot, which <laughs> is one of the reasons why, uh, as you can probably tell. So uh, we will be back studio side together. <laughs> we will, of course, be back uh, together uh, later on this month as well we for, uh, for, the, for the bidding show when, when actually the auction actually goes live. And, of course, this is for the September uh, auction the catalogue went live on friday i believe when does the bidding actually start paul right okay well the auction uh, will go live for bidding um i said the lots are all live to look at now so you can do all your research work uh, but then i uh, said so the the bidding starts on monday the 19th um, and we'll finish on the wednesday which is the 21st of september um, and that will be the date when uh, we, we find out what we've sold out of the 162 lots we've got in the catalogue this time well, yeah, 162 lots. Uh, there are quite a lot to get through. Uh, but before we do that, of course, let's just touch on that July auction as yeah. well. Let's have a look at some of the uh, incredible results. I've just managed to get the text in. Here we go. July auction, there was 120 lots. 78% of those lots were sold, raising 21.6 million for your clients, Paul. Wow. Right, yeah. yeah, fantastic uh, results. Um, you know, I mean, the, the, the property market is still going from strength to strength. You know, we haven't seen signs of it's slowing down. We haven't seen signs of people getting nervous yet. You know, it, it, it's it's absolutely positive all the way. Um, so yeah, you know, the the auctions have been absolutely fantastic, as you know, um, and the results just speak for themselves. You know, that is, that, that that's you know not <laughs> fiddling those figures in any way, shape, or form. That's definitely a true no. reflection of what's happened. Um, and uh, yeah, as I said, the, the the auction result was absolutely fantastic, and there was lots sold. You know over half a million pounds plus and uh, as we know therefore Gilkirka um actually sold on the on the day of the auction as well it's just over 1.3 million so that's fantastic wow. result. yeah fantastic that, result. that was a cracker was it certainly a standout we've got a, a fair few standouts so we're going to take you through <laughs> it's great the wonderful and brilliant again so uh, <laughs> absolutely we've got great selection we certainly do uh, now we will say at any point watching this show if you're new to auctions or, or you're you know what you're doing. You've got the experience. You know what you're doing, but you want to find out more. Do register your interest. Uh, head over to cliveemson.co.uk. There's the website. However, to make life even easier for you, we have put a link in the body of this broadcast. Wherever you're watching it, there's a link that takes you straight through to the Clive Emson website. Give it a click. Take you straight through. Register your interest for the September auction. And there's also a phone number, isn't there, Paul? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if, if there's anything you want to talk about, if you want to you know, know a little bit more about any of the lots, you can pick up the phone, speak to any of the negotiators who've, uh, who've looked at the properties, um, get a bit more information. You can give us a ring on um, 0345 Fantastic. Now, right, before we get into the lots, uh, it is very important. So we normally show a video at this point of you five golden worlds, but because we've got so many lots to go through, we're going to cut it down a little bit. I've got an image to show. Uh, Paul, you have your five golden rules of bidding. I've got the image here. Let's pop it on screen. Uh, talk us through your five golden rules. Yeah, of course. Um, as I said, the, the five golden rules um, are, well, as I said, first thing is always go and have a look at the property. Has the image come up on your screen? It's not come up this side. Oh, is it not? No, I'm not I'm not seeing it, actually. Let me see. Uh, Elaine, can you try and pop it on, please? Let me have a look. Why well, has the image not come on there? Um, the five golden rules uh, image. We'll pop it up very shortly, but just talk us through it whilst we're whilst we're waiting to get that image shown on. Yeah, screen. well, then that's it. I mean, first thing is obviously you, you get the uh, the email come through with all the, the the information about the lots, and you see all the ones you want to have a look at. First thing is, yeah, do your research. Go and have a look at the property. You know, go and inspect it in person. Um, identify the property you want to you, you want to you know start uh, start thinking about buying. And, you know, don't just shoot yourself to one. Um, you can always put other ones up there as well. Um, and uh, go, and, go and have a look at as many as you like. Um, there are some obviously you can't have a look at, but yeah, go and look at the area, 
you look at the outside of the property if you can't get inside it if it's land go and find out what's either side of the land um, and yeah you just uh, start doing, building your research and once you've done that next step is to go and get the legal pack now that will be available to download from our website it might not be yep. avail available today but if you register your your details um, as soon as the information comes in we'll get it over to you send you an email to let you know that the packs in and ready to download so yeah the legal pack is get your own legal advice on the information that's provided but it should be then everything that you want to see um, about that property that land that commercial premises that you want to know about that property on a legal footing and let's say your solicitor can then give you advice on that and okay. once has that has that come on screen for you now paul can't see it this one, no no oh no neither can i uh, i'll tell you what we'll do we'll play the uh, video uh the five golden rules of uh, bidding and uh, we'll make sure we get those images shown for you okay hello i'm paul uh, from clive emerson land and property auctioneers i'm one of the auctioneers with the company and we want to give you some tips on how to buy a property at auction the five golden rules to buy in an auction um we're in the beautiful mid essex village of turlin and an example of one of the properties we've got in their current auction um, this beautiful chapel here in Turlin and uh, we want to give you as I say, a few tips on how to buy at auction which should be the most open transparent and fun way of buying land or property um, so come inside and we'll give you some tips okay so you have found the area that you want to buy in you've done all your research into uh, areas and what you want to do with the property when you when you when you've uh, actually purchased so you see a property in the uh, in, in the auction catalog or online and you say that's the one for me i really want to go and buy that property here's the five tips we should recommend you should be following if you want to buy a property at auction firstly get all the property details download it from the internet and look at it online and go and view the property inspect the property is a big important thing you need to do you see a lot of people on homes under the hammer who buy something and have never seen the property very risky i would always recommend you in person go and look at the property if you can second point is the legals um, always download the legal pack get your own legal advice on that legal pack uh, get your solicitor to look at the pack you can send it to them or they can download it from our website also um, because really that is everything you need to know about the property and like I say, it's the most open and transparent way of buying a property. So everything about the property will be in that legal pack for you to have a look at. Next thing, do you need a survey? Do you need it for finance purposes? Do you need it for your own peace of mind? If so, then obviously you need to organise that survey before you come along to the auction to bid. Um, so that is a really important point. You may not need a survey. You may have be comfortable looking at the property yourself, have people you know who are comfortable of looking, about looking at the property and can give you advice on it. But if you need a survey or you want peace of mind, do it before the auction. Because after the, after the hammer's gone down on the day of the auction, you've exchanged contracts. You're legally bound to purchase that property. So if you then go and get a survey and you don't like the, the report that comes back, you're, you're legally bound to still purchase that property and you've paid your 10% deposit. Fourth point is knowing the costs. Know the costs of what you're going to be involved with. Is it just the purchase price? You, there's also an auction administration charge, which is on a, a sliding scale depending on the price you purchase at. All the information will be available on the addendum um, and uh, is, is available on our website and the catalogue also. So look into that. Also, in the, in the special conditions, which are in the legal pack, you will need to look at if there are any additional costs that you need to pay uh, towards, the, towards the purchase. Sometimes there are costs in there. So yeah, just have a look at that. That's quite an important point. But also, in terms of knowing your own costs, what do you need to spend in terms of uh, doing the property up? Um, additional uh, research work, anything that you might need to do to get to the end product that you actually want to, want to, want to end up with. As, as I say, so know those costs, work it all out, and be quite thorough and be quite, have a bit of flexibility in your budget too. For the last thing really is to register for the auction. Our auctions are still online at the present, so um, what you need to do is go to our website, click the register to bid button, and follow the links through to all, all and, and fill in all the information, including your identi identification documents, your credit or debit card details, your solicitor's details, and uh, build your, your profile on the bidding platform. Last thing, auction day, don't panic. Stick within your means, know what you want to pay, and uh, as I say, really you just need to then uh, follow the process and see it through to the, to the counter down to getting to zero or that hammer falling. And at that point, you know you've purchased the property. And the one thing to remember is if you are the successful bidder, 
you've never overpaid for a property at auction. Uh, unlike informal tenders or on the market, you don't know what other people have bid. At auction, it's open, it's transparent, you can see what the underbidder's paid. And if you are the successful bidder, you know you've got it for one bid more than the, uh, more than the underbidder. So congratulations at that point, well done, you're the new owner of, a, of a land or property. So I hope that's been helpful. Uh, if you have any questions at any point during the process, best thing to do is give us a call and uh, we'll be only too pleased to talk you through the process a bit further and answer any questions you've got. Thank you. There we go, uh, Paul, good stuff indeed. Now, uh, I, I fingers crossed we are uh, going to be able to show the images now. If not, uh, I don't know if anybody else can see that on screen. Let's see if we can pop the five golden rules on screen. Elaine, if you could uh, do that for me, let's have a look. I'm not seeing anything on screen now, actually. I don't know about you, Paul, are you? No, nothing coming up, I'm afraid. No, nothing's coming up at my end. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do then for, for this segment to keep us going. We do have a number of feature lots yeah. to show as well, don't we? So I think we should start with our first yeah. feature lot. Feature lot number 19. We are going to have a guest going to come in and, and talk us through that. It is quite a, uh, a lengthy video, though, so we're going to check that one out for you. Uh, let's have a little look at feature lot 19. I'm going to play the video, and it's a beautiful Chelsea Baptist Church. Let's uh, okay. play the video.
Oh, I do love uh, I do love a good church uh, there. And of course, Paul, you, you were joined by a very special guest now as well, aren't we? That's right. Yeah, Russell's joining Hello. me in the, uh, in the studio here. Yeah, that's right. Russell, it's good to see you. Uh, that's that sub property you've got there up for auction. Tell us more about it. Yeah, it certainly is. Well, when um, when we got the call to assess that one, and the client was telling me about it, I knew that was something we had to get involved with because Clive Emerson have got really good reputation um, for uh, bringing to auction and selling this type of uh, this type of lot. So, and it's yep. looking good in the current catalogue because we've got some other churches and, and chapels. Um, but yeah, uh, Wolsey, uh, brilliant. Uh, Quiet little village in uh, just south of Wallingford, Oxfordshire. Yeah. Um, it, it is what it is, a detached building, set on its own plot. It's got planning consent to convert it into a three bedroom um, property. And um, yeah, you know, full planning's there. So, where with some other lots we may have sold in the past, you've had to apply for planning. Um, all the hard work's been done for you in this one. Yeah, project all ready for someone to walk into and get started. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you did a star spotted on the way there, apparently. Oh, God, yeah. Um, I can't believe it. So I'm in the middle of nowhere um, and driving through another little village and I'm at set traffic lights and there's a guy walking up the street with his dog. As he got closer and closer, I went, I can't believe it. That is Jeremy Irons. <laughs> the, Jeremy uh, Irons, oh, actor. yes. And I thought, I can't believe it. I mean, I could have, you know, I'm, I'm in the middle of nowhere. I wasn't expecting it at all. And he walked along nonchalantly, you know, straight into a little coffee shop. But God, yeah. So there you go. Rubbing shoulders with the. Uh, that's it. Yeah, that's it. That doesn't happen in Chelmsford. Too often, <laughs> no, it? No. I, a couple, a couple of only ways six stars, maybe. But I wouldn't know if we trip over it, to be fair. <laughs> well, Jeremy Irons, if you're watching this, uh, that property is. Yeah, right. Irons. Yeah, Irons. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Russell, tell us how long have you been with Clive Emson then? T tell us more uh, about uh, how long you've been with Clive Emson and, and your career. Uh, well, uh, this is my second year. Um, so yeah. I started just after the lockdown. And um, yeah, it's it's been brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. And, you know, for me, every day, it's, it's a busman's holiday, really. I love it. It's great. <laughs> yeah, I, I worked with Russell a few years ago and um, I... <laughs> I told him he was wasted where he was. <laughs> and <laughs> he come and join us. And I've been trying to get him to come and join us for years. And uh, um, yeah, when the opportunity came up, um, there was the one who got a man to call and start putting the pressure on. And uh, yeah, I got my man. Got my man. <laughs> now, let me ask you a quick question, actually, because I always find this fascinating. You know, I'm not involved, obviously, in auctions or such other than this show, really. And that property you've got there, the church we've just been, we've just seen there, that magnificent property. How does that come to you? Do, do, do you see it at the side of the road and think, I'm going to inquire about that? Or do people come to Clive Emson and think, I, I want to put this up for auction or, or I'm not really sure what to do? How does it work from, from start to finish of somebody going, I want to sell at auction, what do I do? Yeah, it's, it's, it, there's a, a whole different uh, number of reasons, really, something might come to auction. Um, I mean, yeah, we get people contact us directly because they've seen us on Homes Under the Hammer. And that, to be honest, is one of our best adverts. Um, yeah. Is that, you know, we, we, we appear on that program a lot, which is great for us. Um, and uh, people put two and two together, work out who, who we are, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, so we get a lot of calls off the back of that. And it, it's great education as well in terms of telling people what to do with auctions. It's not feature-led it's not you know looking for a, a, an inside story or anything like that it's just about the people and the property and that yeah. is perfect and it tells people what to do at auctions but not only buyers but sellers as well so we get properties like this one um which uh, is a, a, a former chapel we had turning chapel earlier in the year we've got other chapels and churches in this catalogue as well um and uh, as i say yes it's quite a specialist type of um yeah. property People will look through the internet, see who sold similar things, and they'll contact us off the back of it. On top of that, as, as Russell mentioned, we've got a great reputation um, with buyers and sellers alike. Um, you know, having Clive having started the business you know, 30, almost 35 years ago in, in 1989, um, that's when, when the company was founded and we you know, built on uh, you know, uh, uh, the family name, uh, and uh, we're still a family run business. So customer service is very much key to us. And we have to create that, you know, that positive, um, good feel about what we do, but also working with integrity and fairness and all these things that you shouldn't yeah. be, you know, every auctioneer should be doing uh, in order to improve the standards in this, uh, in this, in this sector of the market. Um, Russell, so, yeah. Sorry, go on. Uh, it, 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 
in short, um, yeah, you know, the, the inquiries come from uh, you know all different kinds of uh, you know from different kinds of avenues, and you know we we are one of the largest um, auctioneers in the UK. So uh, uh, as I say, it's uh, it, we, we appear quite high on people's radar. Now, fantastic stuff, Russell. Let's come back to to the church. What who do you think this property is ideal for? Um, well, as as I've said in the catalogue, you know, it, it's ideal for developers. Um, personally, I th I think this is going to be suitable for somebody that's looking in particular to live in that part of the world, um, yeah. and it's got character. They can't do an awful lot with the outside of it. Um, it's not listed, but you can't really do much because they want the, under the planning consent they want to keep as much of the exterior as possible yeah. um but you could go in there and and, and, and change it around and, and get some really good accommodation it, it have two bathrooms um, be pretty good looking at the plans which can be downloaded from the local authority website um yeah. I, I i really think the person that's going to buy this is going to be for own occupation um yeah. they may have been looking for something in particular coming up i'm not 100 percent convinced somebody's going to buy it and then rent it out it's, Wallingford, yeah. uh, Charles is not that type of area. Um, yeah, it's quiet. It's very local, um, and uh, yeah, I think it's going to be it's going to be unoccupied. What do you reckon? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, someone looking for a, a self-built project or something like that. Um, you know, a, a developer. Yes, they might look at it and think you know they can make a, a an improvement in terms of the price they resell it for. But something specialist like this, someone you know, someone who's looking for a a chapel conversion or a church conversion yeah they make fantastic conversions yeah. so um yeah, yeah yeah there's a market out there for people looking for something just like this um so you're right yeah i think i think we'll find that it will be someone who's looking for the self-build project a self conversion project uh, and you yeah, know who's, who's looking to be in that specific area and I, and, the, and i think because the obviously it depends on what you want to do but you've not got to build the property You've not yep. got to spend money doing a planning application. That's all done. So the only costs you've got there are conversion costs. Just, so, yeah, right. just changing the accommodation, fitting it, getting your supplies in, getting your gas, electricity, whatever's there. Um, so it's quite, you know, in terms of the actual outlay, it's actually fairly minimal, you know, um, to, to then have a really, ex you know, really exciting property that's all done in that part of the world. Talking of outlay, is um, am I right in saying guide price three fifty plus? That's right. Yeah, I mean it's a high value area as well. Um, yeah, you know it's a pop, you know, a really popular little location. Uh, so you know guide price at three fifty plus, and then yeah, say so you could, people can make, it, put in there the, the fittings, the, the furnishings, the quality of kitchen they want to put in there, and you know I, I, I would I would say uh, whoever's going to do this, I'm sure they'll do it very well, um, and they'll put high quality fittings in there to really make it. Mm. You know, stand out and be really fantastic. And it's, and it's tucked away, so you wouldn't know it's there. And I'd like to think that probably um, whoever did buy it, they kept the, the little archway across the top. Oh. There's a Charles yeah. Baptist Church. Mm. You know, it's, I mean, little character bits like that. Amazing. To be honest, if you blow on it, it would probably fall over. But if they win really <laughs> and kept it. Really amazing because you, you're away, well, you, no one would know you're there, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That's, that's why I like it. That's why Chap I don't think it's a thing wrong. Question for you, Chaps. You mentioned Homes Under the Hammer, of course. What they do on Homes Under the yeah. Hammer is they, they obviously go to see the property and then they go back after it's been kitted out fully, shall we say. The developers uh, had their, their two pence worth yeah. into it. Do you guys ever do that? I mean, this property here, the, the, the Baptist Church, would it be amazing to go back in a year's time and, and see how it looks? I'd love that. I mean, I say, so, yeah, we, we keep um, yeah, threatening to go and see some of the, the ones we've sold, and uh, we, we'd love to go back and see some of it because, yeah, I think the job, I mean, so, as you know, the, the, the types of property we get are so special sometimes. As you go back and see the finished article, would be amazing. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I'll make a point of this. When we sell this, <laughs> I'll make sure yeah. that we go back there and then we will do this again next time we come around, yeah. if everyone remembers, <laughs> and we'll do our own little section, Homes Under the Hammer. Chapels Under the Hammer. Under the Hammer, before and after. Russell, we'll come with you because actually one of it, it's not too far away, uh, Wallingford, from me. It's just up the road. Okay. So uh, I'll come with you. Fabulous. Absolutely. You're on. You're on. <laughs>
<laughs> Fantastic stuff. Russell, thank you so much for taking uh, that uh, through that. That's uh, feature lot 19, Chelsea Baptist Church. Chelsea, Ian right, Wallingford, Guy Price. Ian, before I let Russell go, yeah. um, we've had a lot of feedback that these sections are actually the, pe the bits people enjoy the most in, yes. the, uh, in, the, in the videos that we do because uh, they get to meet the team as well. So I've just put together 10 little questions for us. Um, oh, oh. Yes. Yes. I'm going to do one. I'm going to come to you in a bit, Arian. So you're going to get your turn too. They sprung. Okay. So, so people want to know a bit about Russell Hall. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So it's ten favourites. Right. All right. Okay. Ten favourites. I'll do my best. Right. Favourite holiday destination. Quick Greece. fire. Greece. Come on. Greece. Favourite place in the UK. Uh, Chelmsford. Liar. <laughs> Chelmsford. <laughs> Favourite place. Nothing, nothing wrong with Chelmsford. It's a great place. Favourite place in the UK? Um, uh, I'd have to say at the moment, Wembley. Wembley. Russell was at the, uh, the Taylor Hawkins gig at the weekend. Oh, wow. I've heard a lot of good things about that. Yeah, actually, actually yeah, yeah, I really... have to shout. <coughs> uh, so, you also Wembley Stadium. Your first car? Oh, dear. Uh, an Audi 80 1973 two tone green. Oh, nice. Never forget that car. Yeah, we'll look out on that later. It's one of the retro, isn't it? Lasted about three weeks. <laughs> That's about three weeks. <laughs> Favourite drink? I've got to say at the moment, it's probably a nice, nice glass of whiskey. Nice glass of whiskey. Oh, good man. Yeah. Single malt? Oh, yeah. Single malt? Oh, yeah. No, don't do that like mixing stuff. Particular region? Um, it's got to be Scottish. It's got to be Scottish. Scottish, yeah. Favourite food? Um, uh, my wife's lasagna. Oh, well, very well said. I know what you're getting for dinner um, tonight. Uh, yeah. She's not watching, but as this is going to be recorded for later, I'll make sure she's she watching. will be watching it later. There's the thumb. There's the thumb, Russell. Uh, don't worry, mate. <laughs> Your hero. Sporting, music. Uh, music, absolutely. 100% Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl. There you go. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Your favourite film? Um, favourite film? Oh, that's very good. Uh, I've got to say, if you're talking about films at the moment, uh, we watched The Grey Man on Netflix, mm -hmm. and I thought that was excellent. So at the moment, that's probably my favourite film. There you go, Russell's recommendation, The Grey Man. Uh, uh, TV programme? Um, Does it have to be current? No, uh, I'll tell you what it is. I know, I know for sure, because I'm a bit of a TV nut. Uh, Better Call Saul, not Netflix. Oh, yeah, Better Call Saul, yeah. Very good series. Yeah. I haven't finished watching it yet, so. Okay, don't spoil the end. Don't tell me. Okay, all right, all right. Uh, favourite famous person I've ever met? Oh, good. Um, Jer other, other than Jeremy Irons. Famous person I've ever met. Um, met, met, met. Uh, oh, God. It's a bit sad, um, but uh, well, it's not sad, really. Um, I've met on a number of occasions a uh, former West Ham football player, Frank Lampard Senior, yeah. which I am very proud to have been rubbing shoulders with. Oh, he bought property for me once. Oh, did he? Really? really? Yes. Yeah. Um, sorry, if you're watching, I didn't mean to let <laughs> <laughs> um, And uh, revived a classic for you, Arian. Favourite biscuit? Oh, God, custard cream. <laughs> oh, custard cream. No, no. Oh, really? Oh. Can I, can I ask you one question, quick fire question? I was at uh, Alton Park doing motorsport at the weekend. I was asking all the race drivers what the drink of champions is. Is it tea or coffee? Coffee. Tea. Good luck. Oh, I'm coffee. Two, one coffee. Here we go. <laughs> right. Brilliant. Thanks, <laughs> Russell, thank you so much for that. Uh, I, I, I'm pleased to say, actually, Russell went first, because I imagine those questions were coming my way uh, a little bit yeah, before we do that. Well, yeah. <laughs> Let's get on with our next feature property, uh, shall we? It is uh, two Sanford Mill. Let me just make sure I'm getting it right. Yes, yeah, two Sanford yeah. Mill cottages in Chelsea. We've got a little video to play for you now. Watch and Brilliant. enjoy this.
you go. Uh, wow, beautiful. I love that music as well, by the way, Paul. It's very soothing, isn't it? It's very relaxing. <laughs> you know, I feel... yeah, yeah, not to send people to sleep, but... No, I think it's quite upbeat. I think it's quite nice. So that is, of course, Lot 36, feature Lot, lot 36, two Sanford Mill Cottages, Sanford Lane. Uh, Chelmsford, your neck of the woods is called Guide Price between 250 and 260, I believe. That's it, Guide Price 250, 260. It's a, well, it's a beautiful little cottage um, down the, in, in Sanford Mill Lane. It's not far from the A12, um, close to the, uh, the parking line to get into Chelmsford City Centre. Um, and again, it's only about two miles outside the city centre, but you wouldn't think it looking at the location. Uh, you know, there's there's fields all around it. Um, yeah, obviously, you've got, as the name suggests, you've got the, the old mill buildings down there as well. But other than that, there's, you know, very few little, uh, you know, cottages. And then there's some you know, river walks and that sort of thing down there. Um, yeah, lovely, lovely little spot, if you consider it. I mean, it's right in the centre of Chelmsford almost. It's in really good condition as well, isn't it? It's almost ready, ready move in. I, I imagine. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it needs a little bit of finishing off in places, um, a little bit of work. You know, the kitchen and the um, the, the extension at the back just needs you know, a little bit yeah. of attention to finish off. And then the rest of it, yeah, it's just sort of decoration according to taste. I mean, um, there's yeah, there's heating in there, but not in every room. So yeah, that you want to be finished off. Um, and then yeah, you know, it is just general redecoration work. Um, so yeah, no, it's it's a it's a beautiful little cottage you know great um, location um yeah i think uh, you know someone looking for this sort of property is getting you know it's going to be very very popular i hope that that loft as well that that sort of converted attic uh definitely needs a, a paintbrush over it doesn't it as well yeah, it's good. Good. I mean, there's, quite two garish blue. <laughs> there's two um two separate staircases as you go in the, you've got this sort of lovely little sort of um uh, with the you know, sort of exposed stud work and that sort of thing, and a lovely fireplace, and then you've got one one door so that takes you up to the first bedroom, and then you go up through a, a hallway, and there's a snug off that, um, and then you go up, and there's a, a, a second staircase up to the second bedroom. Yeah, I say one needs a bit more attention than the other. Uh, that's fair to say, uh, but yeah, it's a it's a it's a great little um, great little cottage, and out the back you've got beautiful gardens, um, as as the video showed, um, and again, there's more information, more photographs on the website at uh, cliveemerson.co.uk, um, and uh, as I say, the, uh, the you go down the, the garden, nice sized garden, and then there's a, a row of little hedges, a little archway through, and you've got a, a decent sized workshop at the bottom of the garden as well. Um, so yeah, you know, it, it, it's got a lot going for it. I think it's, um, I, I think it's been, it's been nicely extended in, in, in you know, sort of in keeping with the, the, the theme of the buildings, a bit of modern, a bit of it, you know, a, a, a bit of a, you know, the character that, that, that was there. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's, it, you know, it, it's all been done really nicely. We've done really, really nice. I think that could be a, you know, great little, great little home for someone. Yeah, I certainly think as well. And as we said, uh, guide price from 250 to 260. If you are interested, as Paul, just to reiterate, Paul, I do believe we actually do have the tick of our running across the bottom as well. Do yeah. head over to cliveemson.co.uk to register your interest for the September auction. Uh, live uh, bidding from the 19th, didn't you say, uh, Paul? 19th. Right. September. Bidding goes live on the 19th, around about midday. Um, and from then, people can, can log on, do the start the bidding process, um, and it'll all finish on the 21st. First lot will finish at 11 o'clock and they'll go on from there um, every every three minutes finishing you know, lot two, lot three, lot four and, and, and so on and so on until lot 162 comes to an end at the end of the day. And a slight change to that is if uh, if we get to the stage where someone's bidding and trying to you know, snipe a bid in at the last yeah, uh, last 10 seconds eBay style, they're yeah. not going to work on their system. Yeah. Uh, because the timer will refresh for five minutes to give everyone a fair chance to come in and re rebid. So, you know, don't think you're going to uh, be outbid by, you know, someone coming in at the last moment. You know, please uh, you know, read through through how the process works. Um, yeah. But yeah, as I say, you, you, you can, you'll be rest assured knowing that the timer will reset. Everyone will get another five minutes to come back and make an increased bid if they wish. And Absolutely. Yeah, as I say, um, I envisage a late night on the 21st because uh, with 161 lots, uh, there's a chance we could still be going at 10 o'clock in the evening, which is uh, <laughs> never a bad thing because it means we're doing well. Exactly, because it's an online auction as well. Uh, to make life even easier for you watching this too, if you do want to register your interest, if you'd like to look at that, uh, there's a link in the body of this broadcast. Take you straight through to the Clive Emerson website. You don't even have to type it out. How how good is that, Paul? We made it. Couldn't make it any easier for you to register your interest as well. Or if you want to give us a call, you know, you know the, as we yeah. say, you know, the, 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 please do give us a ring. If you're unsure about any aspects of the auction process, bidding process, what do you need to look at? What do you need to you know do in terms of legals, etc.? Um, yeah, give us a ring. Uh, best number to reach is on. You can ring the the local offices. 
Um, numbers are all on the website, or you can ring the main number, which is 0345 85 uh, you say, give us a ring on that number. All the team here, you know, we're, we're a friendly lot. We'll be only too pleased to, uh, to talk to you. And Russell will talk to you endlessly about Dave Grohl. Uh, he certainly will. I do remember, I see, I saw the Foo Fighters myself at Leeds Festival 15 years ago now. I'm going back, maybe even longer than that. Sort of yeah. showing my age a little bit here, Paul. Um, now, everybody watching this show, uh, as you can see, we, we've adapted it ever so slightly. We're making this actually a feature lot show. Uh, I'll yeah. be totally honest, we're having a couple of issues with the images getting them shown on screen for some reason. But don't worry, we will have another full lot show. You will see all 162 lots uh, at some point over the course of the next week. We'll repeat this show multiple times as well, up until our live uh, bidding launch show, which will be uh, which will be on the 19th, actually, won't it, Paul? Uh, the day of the bidding launch. You will tune back in and watch that. Uh, get back into it too and we will later on this week bring you another show where you will see the images of all 162 lots going under hammer for this show we're going to focus on the feature lots uh, right now and we've got even more coming up we have a guest coming up very soon i believe that uh, do we have kevin coming up very very shortly paul right, yeah kevin uh, kevin's a uh, 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 historian isn't he? I mean, we had the um the, the naturist club in the last auction which sold really well in the end uh, and uh, as I say, you know, Kevin, Kevin's always got great knowledge of the lots he's selling. So I'm sure he's got something up his sleeve for us this time as well. He certainly does. Uh, we're going to come to him very shortly. But before we do that, he actually has uh, two lots that we are going to feature with him. And one of them actually landed and remains of Napoleonic Fort. And That's another right, Napoleonic, Napoleonic Fort at Dungeness, Dungeness Road. Have I said that right? Yeah, that's right. Land yeah. Battery yeah. Road. Well, yeah. I don't know about you, Paul. I'd quite like to see it. So shall we have a look? Let's have a look. Yeah, absolutely.
know. Uh, I always find those fascinating because it's it's always quite difficult to visualise, isn't it? Of course, that is uh, Land Battery Road, Dungeness Road, uh, Dungeness. Uh, guide price uh, between 55 and 58. So, so land, basically, Paul. It is, yeah, about 26 acres approximately there. So um, it, a little fact for you as well. Uh, it's, it's understood that uh, Dungeness is Britain's only desert. There you go. Did you know that? Is that true? Is that oh, really true? Yeah. And uh, Europe's largest expanse of shingle. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Isn't it incredible what you learn when you watch an auction show? <laughs> Rick Kevin says exactly the same in a minute. No, I just would tell it. <laughs> he's ripping off my, my comments. But uh, <laughs> to be fair, I'm ripping off his. <laughs> well, look, we'll, we'll find out more as soon as Kevin does come in. He, he's not far away. He'll be in very shortly. In fact, he's got two feature lots, uh, yes. which we'll go through with him very, very shortly. Whilst we wait for him, though, uh, let's just talk about that. As well. We spoke about properties coming on. Like that, it's not just properties you get. We had water towers, we had forts, land, of course, as well. Yeah. Uh, how, how does somebody decide that's enough? I'm just going to get rid of this. Is it is it that simple? Do they come to you or do you look at that bit of land and think, right, who owns that? I'm going to do some research and find out and contact them. No, I mean, majority of our, our lots will come to us organically. You know, people contact us and say, look, I've got, a, I've got some land to sell. I want to, I want to do this, I want to do that. And let's say we sell for many different people, whether it's private clients, um, it could be trusts, it could yeah. be charities, um, probate properties, uh, land as well. Um, yes, yeah, so, as I say, there's all sorts of reasons that something might come to auction. And uh, as I say, we tend to find it's not always necessarily the property that dictates it goes to auction. Quite often, it's the actual client's circumstance. They might have had a rental property that's gone bad. They might have been, as I say, unfortunately inherited a property um, owing to uh, you know, um, you know someone passing away, um, or it could just be that they're moving in with family. They're going abroad. They don't want the process of going on the open market, getting a sale, falling through, you know, et cetera, et cetera, and the whole process taking. Oh, I spoke to someone the other day, and they were saying that they put an offer in. Um, and, and, it, and the whole process took nearly 10 months to go through to exchange of contracts. Yeah. That doesn't happen with auction because obviously have, the catalogue comes out, came out just before the weekend. We've got the auction on the 21st of September. Uh, that, that's when it finishes. And then you know, people are exchanging contracts on that day. The drop of the gavel or the, the time of getting to zero is an exchange of contracts. The buyer is legally bound to buy, the seller is legally bound to sell. So as I say, it's, uh, it's a great way of buying and selling. It doesn't work for everybody. Um, but you know, you can people can get finance. They do go and get finance on some of these properties. Yeah. So yeah, as I say, there, there's, there's no nothing that restricts someone buying or selling a property at auction, uh, because as as you see, we sell all sorts, whether it's chapels, parcels of land, you know, great houses, um, commercial property. Uh, we've got an industrial unit in this auction as well. Um, you know, the, the cottage we featured the last lot. You know, the the one yeah. Sanford Mill cottages. Beautiful property, and that, that had been on the market um, with uh, with an estate agent, Cooper Hurst in Chelmsford, brought that to us and said, look, um, we've just had a sale that's not going anywhere at the moment. Um, the client is looking for some certainty, some closure on it once it's sold. And, uh, you know, we, we've suggested this is the, perhaps the best route for him to get that. So, yeah. uh, as I say, you know, the people, people come to us for all different reasons. And so most of it is organic, you know, there's... People that we, you know, we talk to and that say and suggest to them, yes, that might be auction might be a great route for them to consider. Uh, but yeah, a majority of it comes, you know, through word of mouth recommendation. Obviously, the advertising shows like this. I and mean, when we had, what do we have? We've about four and a half thousand people watching the show in the. Uh, we did, yeah. It's it's getting bigger and bigger, bigger. The uh, the auction show, Clive Emson, as well. And uh, and don't forget, do subscribe to Clive Emson on YouTube and the auction show as well. There is a link in the body of this broadcast. Give it a click. Find out even more uh, about it. And don't forget to register your interest for the September auction as well for Clive Emson. Uh, live bidding on the 19th of September. But again, head on over. There's a link in the body of this broadcast. Take you straight through to the Clive Emson website. It's running across the ticker bar at the bottom as well, www.cliveemson.co.uk. Or give this man, Paul Bridgman, a call on... Oh, you don't have to call just me. I, there are other people. Yeah. Are... The team. The team at Clive I, Emson. I am going to be rushed off my feet with hundreds yeah. of uh, but no, we're also only too pleased to switch, of course. And um, if you look on the on the website, it tells you who is dealing with each lot. So uh, as I say, so you can pick up the phone, talk to us. We've seen it. We know what we're talking about in terms of the lots. Um, so yeah, give us a ring. Um, the general office number um, is 0345 uh, 85 
treble three. I mean, I've said that a million times, that number, and I still have to look at it every time I read it out. No, you'll, <laughs> you'll know it off by heart soon. Well, so I do. <laughs> I still have to look at it. Or, as I say, <laughs> or that we've got the five regional offices as well. So you're more than welcome. If you, if you speak to someone in one of the offices, uh, you, you can ring them in the, on the, in the local office numbers as well. Um, again, all the numbers are on the website. Um, and also, as, as Ian mentioned earlier, um, we will be doing the full catalogue run through show. Um, as yeah. I say, there was so much content for this show. So to combine the two, as well as the technical issues, was going to be a long show. And we were going to give it a go, weren't we, Paul? But I think we'd still be live at about midnight tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So as I say, keep an eye on social media, on Twitter, on uh, Ian's um, pages yeah. as well, uh, Twitter, Facebook, um, Instagram. Uh, LinkedIn, you'll, you'll see all the information about when we're going to uh, release that show as well. So, and um, we'll Absolutely. do a full run through show later in the week. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You don't worry. You will see uh, at least images of every single lot that is going under the hammer for the Clive M. Soon auction, September auction. Now, we're still waiting for Kevin to come in, but as I did mention before, he does have two uh, feature lots. He's also got feature lot 135, which is 35A St. Margaret Street in Canterbury. And uh, I don't know about you, Paul, but I'm itching to see it. Do you want to see it? Let's have a look, yeah. Let's have a look.
go. Look, I do love a, a cheery tune there, a cheery jingle, and we've got plenty of them. Uh, that's uh, Kevin's second feature lot, of course, that he's got 35A St. Margaret Street, Canterbury. You might have to fill us in on this one, actually, Paul. Uh, so, so tell us more if you can. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, we've got a sit into commercial premises. Um, saw in the video there. Um, so, uh, you know, a, a nice, uh, a nice street, established properties, established businesses, um, lots of sort of outside space in terms of you know, the outside dining. Uh, Canterbury is a lovely city. Um, it's a yeah. you, you, oh, beautiful. beautiful location. Uh, and this is a, a, a ready-made property for someone to open a, a little eatery, a cafe, a, a restaurant. You know, it's uh, it looks. It looks idyllic, uh, and uh, someone's someone's going to have a dream, aren't they? And uh, let's see if we can, you know, put them on the way to fulfilling that dream with a, a little coffee shop or a, a restaurant. You know, it's, it's perfect for that. It certainly is. Uh, it looks like we might actually have Kevin with us as well. That's uh, almost perfect time. Let's see if we can bring Kevin in uh, to have a quick chat. Uh, Kevin, are you there? Can you hear us? I, I don't actually know. I, I don't know if we're going to be able to bring Kevin in actually. Uh, no, he's the, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to bring uh, Kevin in. Uh, we are, as we said before, one or two issues uh, in the background causing a, a couple of issues that might just prevent us from being able to do that. Uh, but like you said, idyllic location, beautiful property as well. Uh, lot 138, that's 35 St. Margaret Street. Guide price of 300 plus? Uh, 300 plus, yeah. Um, as I say, it's, uh, it's one of those... Uh, Areas as it you know, it's close to the uh, the Canterbury Tales um, visitor centre, and I think it's uh, opposite the uh, Marlow Shopping Arcade. Um, it's uh, it, it's a great you know great great property, and you know as you say, if you go to Clive Emerson dot co dot uk, uh, go look for lot one hundred and thirty eight. You'll be able to download all the information on this one, um, all, all the legal pack and uh, arrange viewing times, all that sort of thing. So yeah, a, a great property to to get involved with. Uh, now, I must say, we do have uh, Kevin waiting with us. I, I can only apologise to you, Kevin, if you can hear us. Um, our, our technical issues is ranging to bringing people into the show as well, I'm afraid. So uh, thank you for, for making the effort to come in, Kevin. But we will certainly hear from you uh, at a later date as well. We also have Audrey uh, Smith as well waiting. Audrey, I don't think, just try to bring you into the studio. I don't think we're going to be able to bring you in either. Um, I have been informed by our software providers that we should have these issues sorted sooner rather than later. However, uh, Audrey does have a feature lot as well hence the reason why we were hoping to bring her in uh, and it's chapel cottage pale cottage in cheddar now cheddar's a beautiful place as well by the way it, uh, certainly is. it, it really is now shall we have a look at these uh paul we'll see if we can get there this in yes here we go
we go. Look, uh, you caught me just having a little sip of my coffee. Uh, I, I'm going to try and bring Kevin in, but he's gone, understandably so. I can't, oh, oh, unfortunately, Audrey, I'm trying to bring you into the studio. I can't get you in either. Uh, but maybe, Paul, you can help us uh, with Chapel Hale Cottage, uh, feature lot 64. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, well, it's a triple element to it, really. is the three cottages. Uh, you've got uh, vacant properties, or two vacant properties, and a tenanted cottage there as well. Um, so, uh, as a Hale Cottage is currently uh, currently uh, tenanted, um, and then you've got uh, the other two cottages which are, are ready to add either add to a portfolio, live in one, rent two, wh whatever you might want to do. Really, um, the possibilities are endless. We're selling on behalf of trustees on, for this one, um, and again, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful looking building, stone cottages um, in, in Cheddar, as you mentioned, lovely part of the world, and uh, as I say, a good amount of space around the back, plenty of parking. Um, so uh, th there's you know greater uh, you know, great uh, potential to uh, enhance you know these these cottages whether they're it's a real shame can't can't talk to Audrey because I'd love to know a bit of the history to these whether they were you know work cottages whether they were you know church cottages what were they you know it's uh, yes, and the name suggests North Chapel it's a uh, well, North Street Chapel that they were something to do with the chapel at some point. Yeah, it is a real shame. Uh, I'm sure we can get more information at some point from Audrey. And of course, don't forget, we will be coming back for another show where we will run through all of the lots again for you, all 162. We're just focusing on the feature lots in this show. Uh, as you can see, that was one of them there, but we will uh, bring up images later on in another show to show you the rest of the 160 or so lots going under the hammer. It's quite a big auction, isn't it, Paul? This one, 160. Yeah. This is the third one we've done with you, and uh, I think 124 was the biggest. I mean, it's a big jump up, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's, it's not the biggest we've done. You know, we've certainly done in excess of 200 lots in the past. But uh, I say, yeah, it's, it's certainly the biggest one we've done for, well, best part of the year, I think, because I think we had around about the same number in September last year. Um, so it's interesting to see after the summer holidays, people want to get business done. Yeah, so people want to sell, people want to buy. Um, so it always tends to be a big auction from now through to the end of the year. Uh, tends to be our you know absolute busiest time yeah it's, 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 it's projects yeah. and things for the new year definitely it's quite it's quite a strange time actually isn't it with the economy the way that things are at the minute it seems um that the auction industry doesn't seem to be suffering at all well it doesn't at the moment no i mean let's say there is there is a lot of uncertainty out there you know cost of living new prime minister being announced today i haven't seen the, the news yet because obviously we've been on air but i don't know who the new prime minister is yet I don't know if, that's well, if you are watching the repeat of this show because we are going to repeat it multiple times if you're watching the repeat comment below uh, and by the way if you are watching this you can comment below too we can see your comments uh, as well so please 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 do get your questions in at any time we do want to hear from you if you've got a question for paul any of the guests you want to find out more about the lots uh, please do comment below we will check them out so uh so don't if worry you just about want to take it, abuse my jacket because i'm out taking enough stick on the on the jacket in the office here i don't think it's that bad it's a nice uh, nice cream well, jacket tell, that's, <laughs> that's the summary you wouldn't look out of place uh, up at essex uh, county cricket ground with that well we, are, we might take a wander over there later <laughs> <laughs> Too busy for cricket today, unfortunately. <laughs> Too busy uh, with 162 lots in total exactly. for the Clive Emerson auction is September auction. Don't forget, head over to www.cliveemerson.co.uk to register your interest and uh, download the full catalogue as well to make your life even easier. We have put a link to the Clive Emerson website in the body of this broadcast. So just give it a click. You don't even have to type it out. We couldn't have made it any easier for you. Register your interest. If you like any of the feature lots you've seen so far, want to find out more, then do check it out. Head on over. Of course, we are going to bring you another show with all 162 lots in as well. Uh, that will be a nice little photo show. We'll get you all of those uh, in too. Now, we are going to, uh, let's just take another look at, um, we, we have actually, we have another feature. It's Welcome Hall Plymouth. Uh, we've only got images for it. And as you know, we, we have one or two issues with that. So we won't be able to show you those. But we do have another one as well. It's 54 Rutherden Road, Blackheath, South East London. It is actually one of yours uh, as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, uh, yeah. I believe, Paul. So uh, let's have a look at the video. Let's have a little look at this and then you can tell us more about 54 Rutherden Road.
Yeah, there you go. Uh, Blackheath, South East London, uh, of course, guard price of that one uh, from 575. And, and it's quite a spacious property, isn't it, for London? It is. Three brilliant sites. As I say, great location. Three, three good, three bedroom house. Um, it's uh, nice and convenient to go up to the A2, Blackwall Tunnel. Um, and uh, But Blackheath itself is a lovely little spot. Um, you know, you've got Blackheath Village uh, not too far away. Um, you're actually just to, not far, too far from Greenwich Park as well. Um, and the great views that offers over uh, over the city of London um, is it, it, stunning. But the property itself um, is, uh, you know, it's, it's a mid-terrace house. They're selling for way more than this on the open market. Uh, it's uh, a really nice property. Um, looks, you know, lovely inside. Um, it's got its, its little quirks to it. Um, and there's more information on that in, in, the, in the legal pack. Um, you know, we're not, we're not hiding anything in that respect, but uh, uh, so it's all there for people to see and, uh, and understand. Um, but yeah, it, you know, it, it's uh, it, the, the phones have gone off the hook on this one already this morning. Wow. Um, okay. Uh, it, it, so you see a, a property in Blackheath at, at this kind of money. Um, yeah, the, the phones have gone gone mad for it. So uh, I think uh, I, th I think uh, the price is right. Um, yeah, thank you to our, our joint auctioneers, JDM, uh, for bringing this one into us. Um, it's uh, it's a you know a great uh, great property. Um, I you know I hope we sell it well. I mean, it, yeah, so you see the bit on the video, lovely kitchen, uh, breakfast room, yeah. nice living room, um, yeah, three great sized bedrooms, um, you know, nice outside space at the back as well. And there's actually a pond below that deck decked area as well. So uh, you don't want anyone falling in it. Um, but, <laughs> Um, it's happened. It's happened before. It'll happen again. Um, by you, not, Paul. By, by you. Yeah, not me. I'm, I'm wearing <laughs> um, But uh, yeah, no. I so say it's a, uh, it's uh, you know, it's, it's a great looking little property. Um, I, I, you know, I do hope that one sells really well for the client as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, superb stuff there. It, it's an area that I know quite well. Not not a million miles away from Elton, uh, which is uh, no, I know, I know, I know Elton a bit better. In fact, there is a, a property. Um, for from Elton in this auction as well, which will bring you, yes. of course, in the next show yeah. that we do yeah. as well. So you will be able to see that. Now, I'm going to see if I can bring in Tom. Can, can we bring in Tom? Oh, oh no, he is, Tom. Yes. We can bring you in. Uh, now, Tom, you've you've actually got a feature lot as, a, as well. Hello, welcome to the show, by the way. Uh, welcome Hall in Plymouth. Uh, in? Tell us more about that particular property. Yes. Um, can you see me? We can. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. How are you guys? You all right? We're all good, thanks, Tom. Yes. Oh, good. Yeah, so um, it's a enormous building. Um, what's it? What's the sort of fact from the EPC? It's thirteen thousand six hundred and fifty, or over that square footage wise. Um, was a former community centre, uh, and then has a sort of almost separate, but within the sort of building uh, retail unit, which was used as a charity shop. Uh, it's got rear access and front access. Um, sort of four stories at the front a middle section which is about two stories uh sort of a basement and first story uh and then got another four stories at the, at the rear as well um so I, I think sort of what what people can be looking at is the potential for development uh possibly keeping the the retail unit making possibly another shop at the front and then trying to get some residential units throughout obviously with all the uh the the consents being uh, obtainable of course yeah that's right yes yeah no it looks a really interesting property and uh as i say this one's come to us uh by, uh, by plymouth council i believe that, that's through the plymouth city council that one yeah so um just starting to get a few of them we've also got another one plymouth, plymouth city council just down the road actually uh that's a one bed flat um yeah, so that, that that's promising with that with that side yeah, of it as well. Absolutely, yeah, no, brilliant. And what, what's the, what's the guide price on the on the on the on the Wilkham Hall? Guide price on that one is uh, sixty thousand to eighty thousand. Um, for the for the size of the property, it's it's quite well, a small combination for that kind of money, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. that's it. Um, I think I did sort of a, a quick numbers on it, and it works out to don't don't quote me on it, but about five pound a square foot. So uh, yeah, it's, it's fairly decent price, but it, it has got it. There is there's fair fair amount of works to be done. Of course. And, yeah. um, so it, there's flat roofs that some need some looking at. Um, but yeah, obviously the the end value, if if you're able to get sort of plan development, could could be a decent value. Well, Tom, That's I've it. got a ten pound note in my wallet now. Can I have two square foot? Uh... That's it. I'll just pass that. <laughs> I'll, I'll retain that for you. 
<laughs> Superb stuff. Now, now, Paul, as we've got Tom with us, uh, I yeah. know you've been doing uh, asking some questions, some ten quick fire questions, and I think I think we need to put Tom under a bit of pressure now, don't we? Yeah, he looks like he needs the pressure. Yeah, he looks like the most relaxed man on earth. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, yeah, phones phones have been busy this morning since the catalogue's gone live. Well, I've actually been out all morning, yeah, but uh, yeah. I've just come in and sat, Sally has not been off the phone since uh, since I've been in. No, okay. <laughs> and there's you talking to us, eh? That's it, that's <laughs> in it. A minute. No, I was say, uh, people love this section of the show where we just, uh, you know, have a chat between, obviously, the negotiators, get, you know, get, um, you know, a little bit more about you. I threw this at Russell earlier, and uh, yeah, so it's just 10 quick fire favourites, really. Right, okay. So, um, favourite holiday destination? Favorite holiday destination. Uh, not sure what people think of it, but Amsterdam. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. I won't it? ask why. We won't ask why. Good night. Good cheap beer. It, it's the the scenery. The scenery. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Uh, favorite place in the UK. Favorite place in the UK. Um, Manchester. Manchester. Yeah. 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 yeah interesting place. It's it's like the London, but not as not as expensive. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, first car. First car was a Ford Focus that I got off my cousin's boyfriend for two hundred quid. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, uh, favorite drink. Favorite drink. Uh, yeah, anything with alcohol, really. He's <laughs> <laughs> ordering coaching you in the background. That's it. I would just keep keep chucking the answers over. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, your hero, whether it be sporting hero, music. Right, okay. Um, probably if it was, I'll go with sporting, Stephen Gerrard. I always like Stephen Gerrard. I, I used to play quite a foot, lot of football when I was growing up, and Steve, Stephen Gerrard was always my favourite player. Yeah, cool. Um, favourite food? Favourite food. Uh, probably a boring choice, but steak and chips. Sounds perfect to me. Sounds yeah, perfect to me. Good dinner, that. Favourite film? Favorite film? Oh, I, another sort of cop out, but Shawshank Redemption. It's got to be up there. Yeah, that is that is a cop out, Tom. It is cop out. That, that yeah, is no. such a cop out, now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good film. Don't get me wrong. It's That's it, film. and I know the people aren't going to argue with it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and... What's it about, Tom? What's it about? Uh, Who stars I'm in it? Really uh, sure. <laughs> it's about dancing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, favorite. Um, uh, famous person you've ever met? Famous person I've ever met? Yeah. Clive Empson. Oh, there you go. MBE. That's it. That's the one. How um, much is that pay rise worth, Tom? That's it. I'll, I'll find out later. <laughs> <laughs> um, and your favourite TV programme? Favourite TV programme? Doesn't have to be current. It could be... <clears throat> can say I watch a huge amount of TV, to be honest. Um... Audrey got the answer for me. <laughs> uh, I'll go with Peaky Blinders. Um, Peaky Blinders. I know it's not I like that, I like that I like it wasn't BBC, wasn't it? Yeah, Definitely. Peaky Blinders. Uh, and uh, last two are connected, really. Um, favorite biscuit. Favorite biscuit. Audrey actually mentioned this one. It's a hobnobs chocolate, chocolate hobnobs. Hobnobs. That's a good shout. That is good shout. And to go with that, uh, that chocolate hobnob, tea or coffee. Coffee every day of the week. That's three one coffee. Three Come one on, coffee. Come on, coffee. Come on, coffee. Tom, did you say Audrey's there? It is Audrey opposite you? She is there. Do you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah over? Unfortunately, we couldn't bring Audrey in a little bit earlier. But Tom, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we really, really do appreciate you taking time out. Uh, yeah, we know you're busy. So thank you so much. No problem at all. Thanks for having me on, and I'll get Audrey to uh, swap over. Right? Yeah, lovely. Please do. Yeah, fantastic stuff. Cheers, guys. So, of Cheers, of thanks, course, Tom. Uh, Audrey's property we saw a little bit earlier actually is the Chapel Cottage and Hale Cottage. Hello Audrey, how are you? Hi, yeah, I'm good, thank you. Sorry we couldn't get you in before. We, we were having a bit of a, a, a software technical issue, but we've got you now, of course. We've just seen Chapel Cottage, Hale Cottage, mm. Cheddar. Tell us more about it because it does look uh, sensational. Yeah, so it's the old chapel building, which is the property you can see at the front, you know, the grey with the four yep. gables. Yep. So that's the old chapel. It's still got the old baptism um bath under the floor so that lifts up you know where they baptize everybody <clears throat> and then there's two cottages as well one of them's actually tenanted at the moment 
um, and the other one is vacant and that's a two bedroom cottage ready to go to be fair it's a little bit tired a little bit you know it needs a clean but yeah it's ready to go but the chapel itself obviously a little bit of hope value there but located you know cheddar is famous for its cheese yeah <laughs> um and it's just a lovely a lovely location in somerset um by the mendip hills you know that sort of area it's it's super and it's gorge as well, of course. It's famous. It's, for it's famous gorge. gorge. It's limestone gorges, is it? I believe, and stalactites and all of that. Um, <clears throat> no, it's a it's it's a nice one. It's got an awful lot of potential. Whether you were to extend the cottages, because there's room there to do that by the looks of things, um, or just to get those rented out and then you know use your potential with the the um, chapel itself. Um, yeah, I mean, loads of different potential there, I think. Um, obviously, subject to all planning consents, but yeah. um, but certainly got a lot of potential. I said Audrey would know their history, didn't I? <laughs> you know the stuff. I, I was shouting to you, that. but you didn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the window's open, Audrey. <laughs> <laughs> but no, great one. It is a great one. And if you need a bath, you just take the floor up and go and have a lie down in there. Absolutely. <laughs> Right, Audrey. Now we've put uh, we've put a couple of people through it so far. Put them through their paces. Uh, Paul's uh, well, eleven questions now, actually, isn't it, Paul? It? And you know, we should ask. We should we should make it twelve uh, and ask what people's favourite cheese is as well. Uh, Cheddar. So just, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, Paul, over to you, Audrey. Your quick fire questions. Here they come. Quick fire questions, Audrey. Come on, favourite holiday destination. I think Turkey. Turkey. Like Turkey. Turkey. Yeah. I, enjoy, I know i just like the holidaying there don't yeah, like the lovely. other bits <laughs> uh favorite place in the uk um cheshire which is where i come from originally cheshire you're gonna say cheddar then <laughs> <laughs> not cornwall no no cheshire. Cheshire. i like cheshire you like cheshire that's fine um favorite drink uh rosé glass of rosé glass of rosé well, Ian, Ian will buy you one next time he comes down to Chicago. Yeah, good. Deal. I'll, I'll hold that's you to that, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, first car? A Mini, a little Mini. mini. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's it, I love a Mini. Yeah, well, everybody's first car, really, in that era, I think. Uh, Favourite food? Um, I want to say Italian, actually. I think yeah. Italian, but I do like a good roast. Yeah. So, either of them, really. No problem. Uh, you, your hero, your sporting hero, music hero, whatever it might be, who you admire uh, growing up. I'm just surprised Tom didn't say Nelson Mandela because uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's just he's picking all the popular ones out of bit, isn't he? <laughs> you know, there's so many, isn't there? You can sit there all day. I think the Queen's got to go down as one of my heroes. That sort of, I mean, she's Brilliant. just amazing, Brilliant isn't answer. she? Yeah, yeah that, that is a great answer, actually. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your favorite film. Oh God! Um, well, I can't even think. There's so many. Um, I do you know what? I can't pick one. I don't know. I don't know. And as soon as I get off here, I'm going to know, aren't I? Um, but yeah, I don't know. Probably Toy Story. <laughs> good film. Very good film. <laughs> Not sure. Shack Redemption. <laughs> no, both my sons actually both my sons did that at uni um and uh, yeah i'm sick of that film yeah if he knows what it's actually about <laughs> if he's seen it i don't think he's seen it <laughs> no he's just fibbing i know it. <laughs> <laughs> um, your favorite or most famous person you've ever met billy bingham of um sas Billy Bingham. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are growing up. Uh, favorite TV program? I think SAS, actually. Who does this? Yeah, quite you're, like you're that. You're for a job or a little spot on there, are you? Yeah, my son made it, actually. Uh, a couple yeah. of years ago, he was the series producer on it. So I've got to sort of... Oh, hang in. That one then, yeah. Yeah, they both make TV programs. So I have to say every single program that they've ever been in. So I suppose The Bridge would be my favourite program. Um, all these things that they've done, yeah, all of them. <laughs> Fantastic. And uh, you, you were you had your little debut on uh, Hands Under the Hammer recently, I hear. Sorry, you were a bit garbled then. I couldn't hear you properly. 
Well, no, that's just Essex for you. Um, uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> you were on uh, Homes Under the Hammer recently as well, weren't you? Yes, it's actually um, it's actually on TV tomorrow. Um, Is it? Yeah. God, I'm like a star. I'm the most famous person I know. Person, Audrey. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised Tom didn't say that. To be fair, well, I'm, I'm surprised. You know, you can read yeah. them in a minute. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. So he's oh, looking right. up for his pay rise. I don't give him that. So. Last, last couple, Audrey. Last couple. Uh, your favourite biscuit? Chocolate digestive. Chocolate digestive, and you're going to dip that in a cup of something. Is cup of tea. A nice cup of tea. tea. Three, two, to, back to back <laughs> in the game. Oh, disappointing, but there you go. <laughs> um, no, just trying to find out a little bit more about them because, let's say, people really enjoy these sections. So uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, next time someone's phoning you and asking you about uh, the property in Cheddar, they'll be asking you, you know, for a cup of tea and a chocolate biscuit. And a, yes, and a glass of rosé. And a glass of rosé. A glass, glass of rosé, probably, but it depends if I'm driving. <laughs> well, Great, Audrey. Rest the show. Yeah, thank, thank you so much for joining us and stepping in there. Apologies we couldn't get you uh, in on your own hey, computer, but to, no Tom problem. to the rescue there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. See you soon then. Take care. Yeah, see you soon. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good stuff. I'm delighted to, uh, we managed to get Audrey. And apologies to Kevin. Uh, we haven't managed to get him in. He did try. Uh, so thanks for trying, Kevin. Uh, big apologies. We will hear from you, though, uh, at a later date. Remember, this is the feature a lot show where we are going to have another show for you as well, where we're going to work through all 162 lots. You're going to see the images. We'll talk through the guide prices for you. You will see every single lot before the bidding goes live for the September Clive Benson auction. 19th of September, Paul. 19th of September, the bidding goes live. Yeah, Monday the 19th from about midday. Uh, the, uh, all the lots will be live for bidding. Um, and the auction will finish on the 20, sorry, 21st, sorry, Wednesday the 21st. First lot will finish at 11 o'clock, and every three minutes after that, another one will be coming along to finish off. But you can bid any time from the Monday onwards. So uh, get involved nice and early. Don't leave it all to the last minute. And uh, as I say, I'm sure I'm sure you'll be some, some, great, uh, some great deals done on the day. We certainly but will now. Wait for the, uh, the next show. You can go to the website now, cliveemerson.co.uk. As we mentioned, the link is running across the bottom of the uh, across the bottom of the screen. Click on the link, um, and you will uh, get through to the um, get through to the uh, the website, and you'll be able to see all the lots there. If you can't wait to to see us again, and then I uh, say so you you can you can make a head start on uh, on seeing all the lots that are available. Yeah, do 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 that as well. And, and to make life even easier, there is a link in the body of this broadcast that will take you straight through to the Clive Emerson website uh, to keep up to date with everything that's happening with the auction as well. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the auction show on YouTube. There is a link in the body of this broadcast and Clive Emerson on YouTube too, because you upload every single video as well, don't you, actually, of the lots too. So do check out Clive Emerson on YouTube. It's well worth a look. Yeah, absolutely. All the, all the lots are on there. They can be accessed directly from our website or you know, go to the YouTube channel so you'll be able to see them all there. Yeah, no problem at all. Now, Paul, we're not going to finish up just yet because uh, we've spoken to Audrey, we've spoken to Tom, we've spoken to Russell. You've put the questions to them, <laughs> but we haven't had them put to us yet, have we? So yeah. I, I think you and me go head to head with oh, these uh, 10 questions uh let, look the first one was um favorite holiday destination favorite I holiday destination, yeah go on and what's it for you and then i'll tell you mine portugal for me it's manhattan manhattan yeah a bit different portugal the algarve to uh manhattan do you know yeah i, I like I, I, I could live there I, I don't know what it is about the place yeah but just magical yeah Excellent. well question two yeah favorite place in the uk well, for me, it's it's got to be uh, Harrogate in North Yorkshire. Is that that home? That home is it? Uh, originally, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, my my favourite place in the UK is a little place in the northeast of Scotland called Cullen. Oh, very nice. A little, okay. little, little fishing village. My grandparents used to live up there, and uh, I, I love oh. it. Absolutely love it. A few decent golf courses up there, I imagine as well. I there are. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not that I could ruin. <laughs> <laughs> favourite drink. Favorite drink? Do you know what? Uh, I can throw a bit of a curveball in here because I'm really into cherry flavored Lucasaid at the minute. <laughs> that so have to be alcohol. Does it have to be alcoholic? I do drink, by the way. I do drink. So. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you don't. <laughs> what about you, Paul? Uh, favorite drink? Um, I do love a cup of tea. Yeah. 
But York, Yorkshire um, tea, he's got the Yorkshire tea. He's got the Yorkshire tea, absolutely, yes, yeah. Um, however, Rob, who we've obviously featured last time with the um, uh, the, the property in the Fort Gilkirk, um, when I was working with Rob down at the the New Forest show, um, he recommended a, a beer to me at the uh, the local oh. pub that I was staying at. Uh, it's a Ringwood Brewery, 49er. Absolutely. Really? I know the Ringwood really Brewery. Nice. Yeah. yeah, Ringwood yeah. Brewery. So uh, next time I'm down, down that way, it's difficult to get hold of around it in Essex, unfortunately, but next time I'm down that way, I'll definitely have a pint of 49er. Fantastic stuff. Uh, right, next question. What, what are we yeah, on? First car. My first car was a Rover 214 SI. Um, it was my mum's, but she let me have it. It had beige interior, five door family saloon, fake plastic walnut dash. I, I was at college at the time, and yeah. I thought I was the cool. All my mates had Vauxhall courses and Fiat Pontos, and then I rocked up with this massive boot, five door family saloon. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> How about you, Paul? Uh, well, not that I had my street cred before this moment, uh, but I'm just not without jacket. Not without jacket. <laughs> There he goes. So I'm just about to throw it all out the window. I had a Fiat Panda. Fiat Panda. Funny Fiat. enough, uh, our, our producer, Elaine, I can see him in the background now. He's pumping his fists. Uh, he had a Fiat Panda as well. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Go for it, Elaine. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, Favourite food? Uh, probably roast potatoes. Roast potato. I love. I do love a roast potato. But when they're, they've they've been really cooked into fat, but not the small ones, not the big yeah. ones. You know, when you yeah. get the, and the crispy, and crispy on the outside, fluffy on the inside. Beautiful. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. What about this? Now I, I get a lot of stick on this. If I go out for a Sunday dinner, uh, my wife goes mad if I put um, tomato ketchup on the table and uh, on the plate and start dipping the roasties in the t in the tomato. Oh ketchup. yeah, not sure about that. Dip it in gravy is fine, but not, <laughs> not tomato no? ketchup. No. 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 You're going to get an invite to dinner then. No, okay, well, I, I I love ketchup. I, I dip most things in ketchup, but not rice potatoes. <laughs> not rice potatoes. All right. Okay. I'll, I'll let me know. But uh, <laughs> Ian says no. Right. Uh, for me, it's uh, seafood paella. Seafood. Oh, not, not a seafood fan, unfortunately. No, I love fish. I love, I love seafood. So, uh, Fair yeah. enough. Take some sauce. Uh, <laughs> your hero. Music. Right. Sports. Yeah, sporty. I've actually got two so i'm going to cheat a little bit uh sure. nigel mansell is one yeah. uh, and i'll tell you yeah I, and i'll tell you why it's because he raced in an era of formula one when it was the best of the best wasn't it you know man uh, mansell and prost and senna and pk when he was good and, and you know what a time to be racing yeah. and he'll probably openly admit he wasn't the most talented out of all of them but he was probably the most determined out of a lot of them and and yeah. he just never quit did he, he never, yeah. never gave up that man uh, my second is Tiger Woods as well. I won't hear a bad thing said about Tiger Woods. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. No, well, I, 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 I kind of had two as well. It was Nigel Mansell and Glenn Hoddle. Okay, I'm yeah. Showing my allegiance there, haven't I? But uh, <laughs> I'll get some comments on that one too. But yeah, uh, Glenn Hoddle, uh, I, I think he was a phenomenal player. Unbelievable, yeah. Even, even when he was Chelsea manager and he was doing things on the pitch that no one else could do. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, some play, some play. Yeah. Favorite film? Uh, Shawshank Redemption. No, no, I'm joking. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you know what? It's a, such a difficult one because it depends on what mood you're in, doesn't it? Funny enough, um, yeah. yeah, I I've just really got back into um, when I was a bit younger. Showing my age here, I had the Lethal Weapon box set on VHS, and it was like Lethal Weapon Four was always my favorite. So I'm going to go with that. <laughs> Lethal Weapon Four. There yeah. you go. Um, I, I I kind of. Again, like I say, it's always kind of what moves you in to, to watch. Um, but one for me that, I mean, I love the James Bond films, but Skyfall yeah. for me is my absolute go-to film. For a feel-good, yeah, good over good over evil type thing. Yeah, is, Do you know what, Sky, funny you say that, because it's the one film that I could just watch over and over and over and over and never get bored of. It's just got it all, hasn't it? Yeah, that, that's a really good shout, actually. All right, subcategory, favourite Bond? Skyfall. <laughs> Bond, as in... Which, which oh, game? which actor? Uh, Daniel Craig, actually. Daniel I, I agree. Craig. Yeah, no, I, I thought you put a real, real change to it. Anyway, go on, my property, but it's fine. You know, it's my problem. <laughs> still. Uh, uh, where were we? Favorite TV program? Uh, um, right. I, I'm going to say this one. Some people won't like it, but I was a huge fan of The Office. You know, with um, they. Uh, you know, David Brent and all that. Yeah. The, the UK one, that's it, Ricky Gervais, the UK one. And then 
when I got Netflix, I started to watch the American one just to see yeah. what it was like. Yeah. And I really liked it. And of course, <laughs> the, the thing about the British office is only like two series. But the American one is like 12 series. So really? it took me like a year and a half to get through it. But it, do you know what? When you first watch it after watching the British one, you're like, oh, my God, this is embarrassing. The more you get into it, it's really good. And because it's so long as well, because it's 12 series, you really get into the characters. And yeah. so actually, I would probably say both offices, the, the UK and the American one, are equally equally as good. No problem. Right. Uh, for me, uh, ooh, kind of, I kind of... I, I, I tell you the Sherlock the one with um, Benedict Cumberbatch and uh, yeah that, I, I really like that um, Luther I thought that was an awesome series yeah um, or like Tom said Peaky Blinders so I've been very sitting not, on the fence there I've never seen Peaky Blinders actually you not know, recommend no, no, good things yeah I was going to say I was going to say Emmerdale but I thought no I'd be a bit more cooler <laughs> <laughs> um, favorite biscuit we're back uh, it's got to be a, a chocolate bourbon isn't it it's, it's just chocolate bourbon. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm going to go with a. Uh, you asked me this question once before, actually. When I we, did, yeah, you, yeah. But do you remember what I said? Uh, I do I actually. Did. I remember it. I, I didn't say, did say custard cream, dear, because everybody says custard. I, <laughs> I said jammy dodger because it was like my carting. Then any winner, jammy said, dodger. Coffee. That's the one. That's the jammy one. Yeah, dodger. I remember now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we've said to your coffee, you're in the coffee camp. I'm in the tea. So coffee wins. I think that's three two or something to coffee. Coffee's the champion. Yeah. Now, <laughs> good stuff. Well, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, as I said before, we will have another show for everybody too. So you will see all 162 lots. Keep an eye out on our social media and, of course, Clive Emson for that one too. We will push it out live so you'll be able to see every single lot. We are going to repeat this show as well. So if you haven't had a chance to catch up with it, if you're watching the repeat, hello from the uh, from the past. <laughs> and hello to the future if you're watching this show on repeat of course uh we don't know who the new prime minister is but you already know spooky <laughs> there you go uh we are going to repeat this this has been the feature lot show of course we've gone through a number of the feature lots that are going to be uh shown for the september auction for clive emson our next show of course we're going to work through all 162 lots you're going to see them all we'll give even more information about them for you as well so don't you worry about that uh paul have you enjoyed it Absolutely great. Yes. Now I look forward to seeing you later in the week where we'll do the run through show and uh, and talk a bit more about the lots. In the meantime, like I say, if anyone's uh, wants to get ahead of the game and have a look at the uh, have, have a look at the, um, the, the the website, all the lots are on there for you to see. You can start booking viewings, downloading legal packs, all that sort of thing. Stop. You know, make it making some uh, investigations into what's out there. Keep an eye on the social media side of things. We'll let you know when the next show's coming up. So we'll see you later in the week, and we'll also see you. Uh, on the, on the 19th of September as well for the uh, big bidding live show. So uh, to announce the biddings live, uh, exactly. and we'll have a, yeah. a chat about the uh, how the how, how the marketing process has gone, what's been the star lots coming up, and uh, what to watch out for. Yeah, absolutely. Now this show is is obviously showcasing the feature lots. It's also a bit of education as well. So to players out, it's actually going to be you, Paul. Uh, you have your five golden rules of bidding, of course. If you're watching this and you've never bought from auction or sold from auction, a little bit under unsure of what the process is, or if you have done it before, it's been a while. You just want a bit of a refresher. Uh, to players out is Paul Bridgman with his five golden rules of bidding. Thank you so much for yes, watching, yeah. and of course we'll see you for the next show. Yeah, I'll see you soon. Hello, I'm Paul uh, from Clive Emerson Land of Property Auctioneers. I'm one of the auctioneers with the company and we want to give you some tips on how to buy a property at auction. The five golden rules to buy in an auction. Um, we're in the beautiful Mid-Essex village of Turlin. And one example of one of the properties we've got in the current auction, um, this beautiful chapel here in Turlin. And uh, we want to give you, as I say, a few tips on how to buy at auction, which should be the most open, transparent and fun way of buying land or property. Um, so come inside and we'll give you some tips. Okay, so you've found the area that you want to buy in. You've done all your research into uh, areas and what you want to do with the property when, you, when, you, when you've uh, actually purchased. So you see a property in the, uh, in, in the auction catalogue or online and you say, that's the one for me. I really want to go and buy that property. Here's the five tips we should recommend you should be following if you want to buy a property at auction. Firstly, get all the property details. Download it from the internet, uh, look at it online and go and view the property, inspect the property is a big important thing you need to do. You see a lot of people on Homes Under the Hammer who buy something and have never seen the property. Very risky, I would always recommend you in person go and look at the property if you can. Second point is the legals. Um, always download the legal pack, 
get your own legal advice on that legal pack. Uh, get your solicitors to look at the pack, either send it to them or they can download it from our website also. Um, because really, that is everything you need to know about the property. And like I say, it's the most open and transparent way of buying a property. So everything about the property will be in that legal pack for you to have a look at. Next thing, do you need a survey? Do you need it for finance purposes? Do you need it for your own peace of mind? If so, then obviously you need to organise that survey before you come along to the auction to bid. Um, so that is a really important point. You may not need a survey. You may have be comfortable looking at the property yourself, have people you know who are comfortable of looking, about looking at the property and give you advice on it. But if you need a survey or you want peace of mind, do it before the auction. Because after the, after the hammer's gone down on the day of the auction, you've exchanged contracts. You're legally bound to purchase that property. So if you then go and get a survey and you don't like the, the report that comes back, you're, you're legally bound to still purchase that property and you've paid your 10% deposit. Fourth point is knowing the costs. Know the costs of what you're going to be involved with. Is it just the purchase price? You've, there's also an auction administration charge, which is on a, a sliding scale depending on the price you purchase at. All the information will be available on the addendum um, and uh, is, is available on our website and the catalogue also. So look into that. Also in the, in the special conditions, which are in the legal pack, you will need to look at if there are any additional costs that you need to pay. Uh, towards the towards the purchase. Sometimes there are costs in there, so yeah, just have a look at that. That's quite an important point. But also, in terms of knowing your own costs, what do you need to spend in terms of uh, doing the property up? Um, additional uh, research work, anything that you might need to do to get to the end product that you actually want to want to want to end up with. As I say, so know those costs, work it all out, and be quite thorough and be quite have a bit of flexibility in your budget too. For the last thing really is to register for the auction. Our auctions are still online at the present, so um, what you need to do is go to our website, click the register to bid button, and follow the links through to all, all, and, and fill in all the information, including your identi identification documents, your credit or debit card details, your solicitor's details and uh, build your, your profile on the bidding platform. Last thing, auction day, don't panic. Stick within your means, know what you want to pay, and uh, as I say, really you just need to then uh, follow the process and see it through to the, to the counter down to getting to zero, or that hammer falling, and at that point you know you've purchased the property. And the one thing to remember is if you are the successful bidder, you've never overpaid for a property at auction. Uh, unlike informal tenders or on the market, you don't know what other people have bid. At auction, it's open, it's transparent, you can see what the underbidders paid. And if you are the successful bidder, you know you've got it for one bid more than the, uh, more than the underbidder. So congratulations at that point, well done, you're the new owner of, a, of a land or property. So I hope that's been helpful. Uh, if you have any questions at any point during the process, best thing to do is give us a call and uh, we'll be only too pleased to talk you through the process a bit further and answer any questions you've got. Thank you.